Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? Oh, yeah, I'm doing good. My voice is a little crazy today, but hello, friends. Well, listen, there is a movie coming out about a book that's been pretty popular called The Shack. Yeah. So the question we want to talk about today is The Shack. Is it a Christian story? Well, look at the book. The guy who wrote it is named Paul Young. He was the son of missionary parents in New Guinea. And uh, actually, on the back cover of the book, he says he's trying to answer the question in Christian fiction of uh, where is God in a world filled with so much unspeakable pain? And so he's trying to use story and fiction to answer that question. In fact, uh, I wasn't there, but at uh, a major publishing event where, where different writers are there, the publisher of this book actually had a big sign up that answered the question, you know, what is God like? So uh, they would tell you that this is Paul Young's effort for you to get a glimpse into what God is like. Let me just say this about uh, the book, The Shack, you know, because it, it's not a bad book to read. I don't know very many books that are. I mean, I don't even mind that folks read The Da Vinci Code. But if you get your view of God from The Da Vinci Code or The Shack, I'll go even a step further, or Pilgrim's Progress, you're not getting your view of God from the place you should. Is it okay to read Christian fiction and to be discerning? Yes. In fact, it's necessary. Anytime you read any book, including this one, you are called to um, be diligent, to show yourself approved as a workman who doesn't need to be ashamed, who accurately handles the word of truth, okay? Now, we want to talk about the shack specifically, but let me just say this. Even when the scriptures are preached, much, much more so when you're reading Christian fiction, even when the scriptures are preached, you want to be like the uh, noble-minded Bereans, okay? In Acts 17, 11, it says the people in Berea were more noble-minded than the Thessalonians, who, when they heard Paul talk about the scriptures, they examined them to see if what Paul said about them was so. You better do that when you read the shack. You better do that even exponentially more when you read the Da Vinci Code, which is crazy, okay? And you better do it when you read Pilgrim's Progress, because that's going to help illumine the great work of John Bunyan. Now, here's my deal with the shack. The, the, the shack taps into a question we all need answered. And the question is, is God there? And especially, is God there when I hurt? I love what Paul Young does with this idea of what he calls the great sadness that his character Mac feels. And every single one of us has at some level, maybe not to the extent that Mac does in the book, a great sadness. And we wonder, man, how can God be good and loving if this happens in my life? And what Paul Young is trying to do is let people know that God is there and God cares. Now, I want to say this right now. This is really important for my friends to listen to. Some people tell me, I love this book because after I got done reading this book, I felt so much closer to God. Now, is that a good thing? I want to go, it's always good to feel closer to God. But the question I want to ask somebody when they tell me that they feel closer to God is, well, what God do you feel closer yeah. to? Yeah. Okay, tell me what God is like. Okay, because here's the truth. When God reveals himself to Moses in Exodus 34, 6, and 7, and Moses says, show me what you're like, reveal yourself to me. God reveals himself to Moses, and he says, here I am, the Lord, the Lord God. I am compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands. All right? The shack does a great job showing you that God. But God doesn't stop there. It also talks about the fact that he forgives iniquity, transgression, and sin, yet by no means will they let the guilty go unpunished. One of the greatest criticisms of the book, The Shack, is that it can make people believe. And in fact, God in the book, The Shack, and this is one of the problems with Christian fiction, especially the way that Young has written about it, is that when you have God be one of your characters in the book, okay, you're actually speaking for God. Okay, one of the greatest books that's ever written to help Christians, a book by C.S. Lewis, it's called The Screwtape Letters. And in The Screwtape Letters, C.S. Lewis writes from the perspective of an of a archdemon to a younger demon about how to torment a Christian. And Lewis thought about writing a book where he had an archangel writing to a guardian angel about how to encourage a Christian. And he didn't do it because he said, I was overwhelmed with the responsibility of speaking as God would have an angel speak to a human. In other words, every word he said must ring true of heaven. And Lewis wasn't sure he could do it. Well, Paul Young went to an even greater length to say, hey, this is what the Father says. This is what the Son says. This is what the Spirit says. And so he's quoting God. And while you might make a case 
in some Christian fiction that when somebody is processing who God is like, he didn't get it just right because we're human and we all have got a fallen view of God. When you're saying God the Father is giving counsel to a guy, you better get it exactly right. And there are some things that you could question that he got exactly right. I've got right here probably what I think is the best review on the shack. And the reason I do is because my friend Randy Alcorn uh, sat with Paul Young and said, what did you mean when you had the father say this? Why did the son say this? Why didn't he say that? And so Randy does a really good job of giving Paul a chance to explain himself. And so all I want to tell people is, hey, man, read the shack if you want to, but know your word. Okay, we've got a real truth real quick. We'll link in the show notes um, that, that talks about what's a biblical view of the Trinitarian God. And uh, let's insert this right here because we've got another buddy who's got Yeah, I have copy. another copy <laughs> yeah. right here. And you can see here, this is yeah. a shout out to John Elmore. Yeah. It says, uh, not 100% true to the Trinity. Caution, this is not gospel. And, and he's having a little fun with this, right? But what he's saying is, hey, before you read this, this yeah. is not a Trinitarian textbook. Right. right. It's exactly that. And I don't know if Paul Young meant it to be, but listen, when you, when you say this is what God is like, Okay, or again, to quote the exact back of the book, it says, this answers the question, where is God? And then when God speaks to you, he says, I'm right here. And then he says some pretty amazing things that, that, that I don't think, you know, the father would say. So um, as an example, you know, when he says he reconciled the whole world to himself, Mac in the book even asked God, he goes, do you mean those who believe in you? And he goes, no, Mac, the whole world, which can lend towards this idea of universalism which is there's two kinds of universalism for folks that are watching. One is that everybody goes to heaven. The other is that you may not go to heaven, but everybody eventually comes to believe later in what you need to believe uh, in, which is Jesus, in order to go to heaven. Okay, R Randy, whose review we'll link in the show notes, has a conversation with Paul Young about that and what Paul believes. And uh, it's worth reading, but all I wanted to say is, if you want to get a biblical view of God, how to be reconciled to him, don't read The Shack, read this. Um, in the book, The Shack, the son says, I'm the best way to get to know the Father. Now, if what Jesus means by that in The Shack is that I'm the visible image of the invisible God, you know what the Father looks like? Look at me. I have no problem with that. In effect, you could say Jesus said that. But some people might go, well, yeah, he's the best way, but there are other ways to get to the Father. No. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except by me, right? Yep. And so you've got to be really careful. Should you go see the movie The Shack with your friends? Why wouldn't you? I mean, there's a lot of junk we go see we shouldn't see. The Shack is a great opportunity to go and help people be discerning and to study the Scripture to see if the way the Father and the Son and the Spirit were represented is consistent with the Word, okay? So read your Bible. Okay, and when you read your Bible, be careful to show yourself approved that you're not twisting the scripture. Okay, much, much more show without so with allegory and fiction. Okay, so uh, there's so much more I could say about specific detail to the book. I brought quotes from the book here, that's why this is here. But let me just say, I love it as a tool to em engage people in a conversation, but make sure you know God and that you can engage people with a biblical God. The book makes me feel closer to God. Great, what God? If it's not a biblical God, he's not doing you any favors because there's all kinds of false ideas about God that people like and embrace. We don't want to make God in our image, okay? We want to get the note of the God who's revealed himself to us. And so is the shack a Christian story? It's Christian fiction, okay? And you better make sure that you know where the fiction drifts away from perfect truth, okay? If you don't get a sense of the unity, the equality, and the diversity of the Trinity, there's heresy. And there's things in that book that can confuse you on the character and nature of God and even what's necessary to know God. But you want to be comforted with the love and the nearness of God that he's tender towards you? It's a great book, all right? Not as good as this one, but I would use it with a conversation. I would see the movie with a conversation. Christian, make sure you're ready for the conversation. Awesome. Thanks, Todd. Hey, listen, this episode's a little longer uh, than normal, but man, it, th this, these topics are really important. And so, so important. you know, we, we believe yeah. there is only one God, his triune. And so if you have any questions about the Trinity, like Todd said, in the show notes, we're going to put links to a, an episode that we did on the Trinity, some other yeah. books. If you're interested in learning more about the Trinity, there's some books that you can read so that when you read the shack or hear other pastors talk about the Trinity, yes. you can know what a biblical view of God is. Is. I tell people when you listen to me speak, evaluate it carefully, okay? The Bereans did that when Paul spoke. 
So make sure this this episode's about so much more than the shack. Yep. Okay, it's about being a discerning uh, Christian who rightly divides the word of truth. There yep. you go. All right, we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.